Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what time of the day you're watching. And welcome to Peer to Spring Software's 52nd Frequently Asked Question video. I'm Ernie Zor, and in this video, I'll go through the steps involved in making a will. I'm using our Deed and Document Pro software, and although it's a big convenience, especially if you're a law office, you don't need this software to follow along, learn something about making wills. I've got it on the screen right now, as I mentioned, and I'm gonna, I, I've already selected the generic will, and the first thing you see here is a plus minus button called a party ID button, so that you can put the name of the person, we'll say Joseph Testator, not much imagination there, male. That's all you need to do. Now when I click OK, not only does Joe's name show up there, but it shows up everywhere else in the document where a name is called for, and also wherever Joe is referred to by a pronoun or an adjective or a noun or whatever, the gender and the number of the reference will be correct. Sometimes people say, well, you know, Ernie, we've already got, we've got templates in our word processor. Yeah, you do have templates, and of course I did 20 years ago too, but the thing is that you almost need two templates, one for each gender, male and female. If you've ever changed globally a he or a she, you'll know that only bad things happen when you try that sort of thing. And, 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 all, and, and you could have separate templates and say, hey, we, we solved that problem. We don't have any problems with global searching for he's and she pronouns. We, we solved it by making two templates, one for female, one for male. Well, it creates a new problem, actually, because then let's say that you're going to make a change to the will. You're going to add a clause that you think is, would be appropriate. Then you have to change all of your word processing templates to make uh, that change across the board. It's an error-prone process. It's a slow process. We've already been there, done that. We thought it through, and our solution is Deed and Document Pro that you're looking at right now. So anyway, I talked about the gender and all that stuff by, by clicking on this, but I'm going to show you one other thing. We've got something called Paste Globals, and when I do that, let me even go to the bottom here where the instrument prepared by the attorney's number and all that stuff. I'm just going to click on the Paste Globals button. And because I set this all up, you see Township, Hinkley, County, it's all filled in already. Let's go down to the bottom. Wow, all done. And uh, like I was saying before, Joe Testator's name is everywhere it should be. And let's start it. Let's go. I've been jumping around just to show you some things, but let's go back to the top start with specific bequests. That's where you give something away. And I'll put one in there. Yeah, I don't know how what the popularity is. is uh, this would be a gift to the testator's son, Robert. And these other things don't really have to be filled out. I could check per stirpes or per capita. Mo I, I, in Ohio, if you don't designate, it goes per stirpes by law anyway. Uh, but let's put that in there. And, and there's room for more bequests than I've ever put in a will. And I'm sure that somebody's going to come up with something and say, well, we've got 100 specific bequests. Well, good for you. You've exceeded the limits of our program. Look at 21. Anyway. Let's keep going down. Uh, now, uh, we made that specific bequest of the grand piano, but now we have to say, uh, who's going to get the what's called the residue? Everything that's left over. And typically, that might be Sarah, testator, wife. And now, her name shows up everywhere. There's um, an optional contingent beneficiary in case the wife is predeceased. I could put that in and I will right now. I'll put the days there and uh, things don't get probated twice I guess. And what would we say Robert was his name?
All right. For simplicity's sake, we'll pretend. Put perstirpes there, even though it's not necessary. Uh, we'll, we'll say child is not a minor, so uh, guardianship we don't need. Executor. Let's pick that surviving spouse, I guess. So her name was Sarah. And sometimes the date, we don't know when someone's going to come in the office, so uh, we just put underscores in there so that uh, when the, the will is printed out, uh, there'll be a blank line that can be filled out with the day's date. And that's what I did there. That's it. You know what? I'm going to mention a few things while I'm on the subject. I should mention that there are a number of provisions that you should probably avoid putting in your will. Burial or cremation instructions are one example. The reason is that the will could be in a safe deposit box. You might, you probably need a court order to open that box, and that that might be set up a week, maybe two weeks later. I don't know when they set them up. Whenever they feel like setting them up, but by that time, the testator could be buried. Oops, too late for cremation instructions. Since you don't know when the will is actually going to be read, leave it off. Give that instruction to someone else. And this is true for the same reason with organ donations. Ohio has organ donation forms. You use them. There's an endorsement on your license. When you go to get your license renewed, you could have that provision implemented on your license, which probably is a great idea. Other things to avoid are IRAs, assets in a living trust, assets that are in a LLC, life insurance and annuities. Why do you not want to mention these things in a will? Well, the reason is because all of these have instruments that provide for disposition of the asset on the death of the person whose asset it is. So if you say, I'm giving my IRA to Uncle Louie, and your wife is the beneficiary on the bank records with that IRA, Uncle Louie is not going to get squat. The whole thing's going to go to your wife. Oh, okay, one other thing that I, I don't know if there's a specific legal reason, but don't explain why you're giving a gift. Just give her the grand piano, okay? Don't, don't, uh, don't put an explanation in there as to why you're doing what you're doing. Now, I've already gone through the residuary estate. We did that pretty quickly. Uh, we didn't have a contingent benefit. Well, we, yeah, we had a contingent beneficiary, so it'll go to the son, I believe. Uh, yeah. Witnesses. Sometimes you know the names of the witnesses. Other times you don't know who it's going to be. Uh, in, in our office, it was always my, my secretary and myself, so I might put in Mary Witness and her address. And... Ward Stone and I know it might look like I'm living with my secretary and well first of all I'm sure my wife would not approve of that arrangement and uh, second of all neither would my secretary and so I'll just clarify that by saying that we usually put the office address when we would do that but of course, you can, anyone could be a witness as long as they're not interested in the will. And all you need to do, you could use the underscores like I did before. Okay, I've mentioned the executor. In case you don't know what the executor is, that's really just the person who takes the will into court, makes sure that the provisions of the will are followed. And again, we have a plus minus button for the executor. Uh, I put that in as the wife, Sarah. I, I, we're re-editing this video, so I may have already done that, but as you see. Okay, the other thing is that, and this is something I, I missed in the first pass, is that I, I forgot to appoint uh, an, a, an alternate. And you want to do that with the uh, beneficiary of the specific bequest like we did. Uh, I don't know if we did it for the specific bequest, but we did it for the residuary estate. And then the other thing is that the executor... In case they don't qualify or they predecease or something like that, you want to have a, a an alternate for that. And so I 
have already done it actually. I clicked on this party ID button here, the plus minus button. I put in the son, he would be the natural. He's an adult if the mom's not around. And now, as you saw earlier on, all of these things are completed. And that's just it, I, we're done. I'll hit the print button. And what we should have here is a real nice will, nicely formatted. One thing is, there could be one specific bequest, or there could be ten. Um, so the length of the will is something that is not a known factor. So, so you always have to eyeball the page breaks. Looks so good so far. Yeah, don't like this. Okay, it's breaking across this instrument prepared by. So I would want to make some kind of change, possibly kick the whole witness clause to a new page like this. There you have it. I've mentioned in earlier videos that although we prepare our FAQ videos, especially for law offices, our videos often apply to other businesses and individuals, and this is one that falls into that category. So I'm sure that whether you're an individual or you're just interested in wills, you'll find something interesting in this video. And finally, if you did find the video interesting, don't hesitate to click the like button. But when you do that, you're supporting the video, letting us know you liked it, and you're supporting our channel, letting us know we're doing something worthwhile. And if you really want to hop on board, click subscribe. You'll be notified when each of our monthly emails is published. We try to make them interesting, whether you're a law officer or not. So at any rate, thank you for taking the time to watch. I really appreciate it. And until next time, stay healthy and happy, and I wish you all the best.